and welcome to Out of the Dark Room on Adorama TV. I'm Ruth Medjbar and joining me on the show today is George Carbus. George documents the Irish coastline both from on land and under the water. Adorama TV presents Out of the Dark Room with Ruth Medjbar. George, thanks so much for uh, driving all the way up here and joining me today. It's very good of you. Um, so if you don't mind, I'd love to know a little bit about how you got started in photography. Yeah, it's been um, 11 years and uh, I pretty much everything started in Ireland uh, since, you know, I, we moved to Ireland from a very hot place uh, in Spain, from Spain. Okay. I started a little bit uh, of photography in Spain. I was like point and shoot camera, um, film camera. And, but, uh, you know, I was just poor young guy, uh, pretty much living a life on the, on the sun. Nice. And... Um, when we decided to move to Ireland, we just just came to the West Coast. And I got blown away um, instantly by the beauty of the coastline, by the, the weather, the, the clouds, the, the, the light. And uh, yeah, it was the first impulse to to start photography really? properly and like buying cameras. And, you were just and ins all the gear. inspired by the landscape. Inspired by Ireland, the yeah. beauty of I Irish coastline, pretty you, much. You document it like no other photographer I've ever seen. I mean, I'm looking at pictures of Ireland, of places that I know, and I'm thinking, how has he done that? That looks <laughs> so ridiculous. It's like the sun is shining or there's beautiful clouds. Anytime I'm down there, it's just raining. Uh, how, how do you do that? How do you make Ireland look so beautiful? Do you wait for the weather yeah. to break? or? That's kind of magic of, uh, you need to be on that place so often and you kind of you kind of have to live there and uh, spend so much time and wait for those gorgeous conditions you have to read weather forecasts you need to you need to get know the place well and uh, after that after after you get know the place you get you know everything about tides about winds about different time of the year about uh, different seasons yeah. then you learn about the, the different lighting and then you can kind of predict situations and then you are actually mastering those those places like cliffs of moher yeah know? i can say like i master cliffs of moher because i've been shooting there for 10 years i spend okay. hundreds of hours photographing those cliffs and um yeah i i can say like not many people have probably better pictures of cliffs yeah. than me because i spent so much time there and it's it's my back backyard so yeah. Do you sometimes like go into the water to take shots? <laughs> this is, you know, I'm thinking of um, there's an island with all the birds and the red sky. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got a beautiful shot. We'll bring it up on screen now so people can see it. I mean, there's, there's shots there and I'm looking going, that's not a straight shot. I need to know how he gets that. Is there f like filters on his lenses? What lenses are you using? Maybe you could give us a little insight into the gear that you bring out um, mm -hmm. for different, different types of shots. I know it's hard because you take so many different styles yeah. of photography. If I can start from water gear, yeah. um, the water, I use two different housings, one for uh, diving, but I never s scuba dive, I al uh, always free dive. So uh, I always like to swim, f you know, lightweight and free to, to quickly adjusting my position, uh, usually swimming with um, quick moving animals like dolphins, sharks, and uh, mantas, or uh, when I photograph waves underwater, yeah, I have to move very quickly. So it's it's very physical and it's more like a free diving. It's it's um, about yeah. fitness as well. So for that kind of shooting, I'm using lots of different kind of wetsuits and housing, camera housing underwater, subal okay. housings. Um, then I'm using uh, splash housings, which w that's what we call uh, like a surf housing, which is lightweight carbon fiber housing oh. um, designed for surf photography. It's actually designed just to swim with that housing around, around, yeah. the, around those surf breaks and photograph waves. So that's, that's, for the, that's the water gear for um, landscapes. Um, you need good tripods, especially in Ireland. It's, it's windy and... Uh, you need to keep your camera steady, especially on those stormy pictures. Yeah. So very steady tripod, which uh, I use the Gizzo, the one of the top of the range of Gizzo. Then, uh, of course, filters. Yeah, tell me about and your filters. <laughs> you must be have some magic filters. I end up using now Nisi, Nisi filters, which are um, 
pretty good and um, uh, I'm in contact with the, with the distributor in European distributor and uh, yeah he gave me a few to try and I liked them and like I them. stick to them stick with them so Nisi 150 millimeter square filters wow very good system so yeah. using like ND 10 stoppers 6 stoppers yeah. and polarizers fantastic yeah. that's a lot of gear and plus of course many lenses and cameras um, and, uh, yeah what, what body do you favor right now now I'm using uh, Nikon D4S yeah. Uh, as a prime body for actions and a kind of low light photography and for landscapes uh, D800. Yeah. I didn't upgrade to D810 because there was very small difference. So D800 still doing yeah, a great yeah. job for my landscapes. Some of the shots that you get are absolutely incredible. And I, I like again, I am totally blown away in that I don't know how you get most of them. Is it crazy to think that you have built up relationships with individual dolphins? Yeah. That's that's probably my lack uh, lack of Irish, because <laughs> yeah. when we came to Ireland, uh, we built this relationship with um, with these bottlenose dolphins in in uh, in the West Coast, and um, there is one solitary female dolphin. Uh, that time she was very young, and we built a relationship. We start to swim every almost like every two days, every week, with her, and we built a relationship. And I was able to to get a, like amazing shots yeah. because we were so so close and um, the trust you know yeah. the trust yeah. between us um, allowed to photograph dolphins like no one else before so i mean there's there's shots that i'm still thinking like they look like they're artificially lit so the whales as you've like beluga whales the ghost shot that you have that to me is amazing because the light is so evenly mm. spread. How does that come about? Is that just, obviously it's, you're not using any flash down there, are you? No, that's one of my rules. I, I don't use flash uh, with animal, with big animals. I, I wouldn't even recommend it. It's, it's disturbing for them and, um, uh, you know, for big animals, it's, it's useless anyway. Yeah. So I like to, I like to keep it naturally. So I work with natural light. I I wait for my light. I wait for the perfect conditions to do that. And for for example, with belugas, it was in um, Arctic Circle. They were under ice, and there are wild animals in the dark, black water. So it's um, it really they pops. pop. Yeah. So it's very easy. It's pretty easy. Wild yeah. wild animals are easy to shoot. You say like, easy. Yeah. I'm sure I could <laughs> never do it. Yeah. And tell me, when you are photographing waves, because I know our production crew here, we were all going over your website and there was loads of questions about technique and how you get things. The shots where you're almost in the water, where you are in like underwater and you're looking through a wave at cliffs and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, what are your exposure settings for that? I mean, are you super fast? Like, Yeah, like um, it's easy. Like, Photography these days, it's um, Let when you say it's easy. It's not easy. <laughs> I mean, the settings are easy. Okay. <laughs> it's not easy to get there, but the settings are easy. Okay. Like with cameras, with latest cameras, uh, you don't have to be worried about ISO. So what I, I'm very comfortable now with a D4, using D4S. Like I'm I'm using manual mode, okay. and auto ISO, which is like amazing. Yeah. Because I I'm pretty sure you know I'm just set up everything like for fast yeah, if, if I want to freeze the scene yeah. I go over uh, 1000 shutter speed and uh, nice yeah. maybe f uh, f8 mm -hmm. and uh, then I so do the job for me with the underwater stuff like the deep underwater with the whales and then with also the surf photography to me that seems very dangerous I mean, you're getting waves crashing down on you I mean, do you not feel a little bit threatened or scared or anything <laughs> Yeah, it's about, um, again, you can't really do that without, um, without the knowledge of the sea, without, knowledge, without actually surfing knowledge. I've been yeah. surfing a lot, it's my big passion, so I, I surf when I'm not photographing, I'm, I'm surf. And I train hard to, to be comfortable in the water and to surviving in situations like that. Yeah. And to be able to cope with the uh, with speed of dolphins or speed of animals. So I train hard yeah. to, to So not to only do you actually, know your gear and your cameras, but you actually put yeah. a lot of work into yourself as yeah, well. Yeah, it's very physical. Was there any kind of critical points in your career in the last 11 years where things have gone really wrong? Any dangers or catastrophes? 
that was super dangerous situation. We were um, photographing um, under the cliffs of Mohra, uh, famous wave aliens, and um, we were on the boat. And uh, there's something happened. Um, we got to, we, the, the, the engine just choked up and we couldn't start uh, the engine and we just drift into the we drift um, into the into the wave, and this wave basically capsized capsized the the boat. It was pretty pretty big day, really really dangerous spot, and some some people went over the over the falls swimming. Uh, they got washed under the cliffs of Mohra. Two of us uh, went. Uh, we make it through through the wave and swim uh, towards the the goat trail. It's very kind of dodgy place where you can actually wow. leave the cliffs of Mohra from the water, but what the big wave surfers do but um, yeah uh, there was lots of gear lost um, and uh, it was uh, it was a dangerous situation and did and, everyone um, make it out okay everyone make it out okay thanks to big wave surfers helps you know everyone got uh, straight away after the situation everyone got into the rescue okay. all the big wave surfers you know know how to drive jet ski into the craziest uh, water so they rescued two others from the okay. under the cliffs Something as well that our viewers are always keen to know um, with photographers that I bring on the show is, um, is it your full-time job or is it a really expensive hobby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm so, my life is so simple. Uh, I don't know if I could survive in Dublin with such an income which I have from my natu nature photography, but um, yeah. uh, it's a, it is my full-time job yeah, and it's brilliant. up and down. It's up and down. I don't, uh, I'm... Um, I am not a millionaire, I'm not, you know, I'm oh, driving a Corolla, I mean, I have a good camper van which I bought from, nice. from really good projects, but uh, the projects come and then uh, you don't have any money, so, and then, uh, you know, I'm always, I'm very lucky, so, yeah. every time I feel, you know, I don't, you know, I, I should maybe start shooting wedding, <laughs> weddings or yeah. stuff like that, the new project comes and save save me <laughs> save you from that <laughs> wedding world i mean it's nice yeah. i mean that's why you love what you do and yeah. so it's just a lot more enjoyable if you're not like a millionaire it doesn't really matter because you get up in the morning and you love going and doing yeah. what you're doing and as well you can share it with us in terms of print sales you sell the prints don't you online where we yeah. can buy them so i mean that's fantastic for us not not every photographer does that but i think for pieces that, I mean, we were looking through your website and we're like, oh, I'd love that in the wall, I'd love that. And it's so accessible, it's so lovely, it's so beautiful. Um, so hopefully people can go and, and purchase from your site <laughs> as well. Um, listen, I just want to thank you so much for doing what you do and going and photographing Ireland. We're so lucky to have you here because I've never seen her looking more beautiful. Um, and thanks for coming and sharing your stories with me. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, thanks for the invitation. Yeah, no props. Cheers. Cheers. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to start the conversation, then please feel free to leave a comment below. I do appreciate the feedback. If you'd like to brush up on your own photography skills, then check out the Adorama Learning Centre. And if you'd like to see more videos, then subscribe to the Adorama YouTube channel. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.